What's going on everyone? So today's video, I'm gonna be talking about camera accessories, things that I deem are necessary investments for your camera rig. Things that I think you should buy first before spending a lot of money on other stuff. Things that I use every time I shoot. If I didn't have any of these items I'm going to have in this video, my videos would struggle when I'm out there filming. So I'm passing on my opinions on this. Starting off with a cheaper thing, but a necessity nevertheless, we are talking multi-tools that is made for film. This is the red branded one. I use it all the time. And what's nice about it is it has kind of the industry standard Allen wrenches, has this you know flat head that fits basically into any spot that I would need to do a tie down screw. It has a screwdriver, it has some star points. It's beneficial. I use it every time I'm filming. It's nice to have an actual tool. Yes, you know, there's cages that come with little keys on them, or you can have a few Allen wrenches in your kit, and every camera or camera accessory comes with oops, comes with an Allen wrench, but having it all in a situation that is all tied together with a little case that you can put on your belt is so beneficial. Get yourself a good multi-tool. V-mount batteries. These are the GDUs, I just like the red. I'm, a, I'm all about style. You gotta have the camera looking clean. If the camera's looking clean, again, as I said in the other video, if it looks good and it feels good, you're putting out better style, you know, better work. I just, I truly believe that style plays a factor. Obviously it's not the number one factor. You have to be good at what you do. But if you feel good doing it, people look at it and like, damn, that's cool. You're gonna be bringing a better image. So, V-Mount batteries, super important. You're gonna need a V-Mount battery or a battery plate to power all your accessories, your monitors, your follow focus system, really anything. I mean, any accessory they put onto it is gonna need some kind of power. V-mount batteries are gonna be the thing that you can shoot for three plus hours, depending on how big they are and how many accessories you're running on it. You get like three or four of them, you just have them in your kit. For those who don't know, there's two different battery back plates. This is a V-mount because it kind of is shaped like a V. Gold mount has two prongs that you kind of click in and slide to the side sometimes. It's just the connection. It's not anything different besides that. V-mount for a V-mount plate, gold mount for a gold mount plate. If you're powering any lights that use V-mounts or gold mounts, the same kind of thing. So whatever you choose to invest in, just make that decision early on. Uh, this is 98, just another factor. If you're ever traveling with them and you don't know, anything over 98, you're gonna have to either you know, check. Bring, you can't check, you have to bring them on. But in all honesty, if you're traveling with batteries, just have them in your your carry-on bag so you don't have any issues at the airport. There's ways around it, there's videos out there, maybe I'll make a video down the line, but just know, any time of travel, 98 or 99 is the highest you can go. Good audio. This is the NTG Rode Video Mic Pro Go, whatever. <laughs> whatever this is. Um, I recommend either this mic, the Sennheiser, um, one that has like the blimp on it, or the DD is a pretty good mic, but I think this one's a little better than the DD. This is the NTG3. This is like my main interview mic, the one I'm using right now. How's it going, everyone? Pretty underrated. Everyone goes for the Sennheiser uh, 416 for good reason. It's a great mic, but this gets very similar audio and it's way cheaper and you can also get better deals on it online. Invest in good audio. Also, I'm recording off the Zoom um, Zoom F6. That's kind of my the field recorder, the one that has the six plugs. You can get the three one now. That has eight bit flow or a 10, uh, 32 bit flow. Just gotta have a good audio and mic setup. More important sometimes than the visuals. Cause if you have good visuals, and crappy sound, people will not want to watch it. It's grating to their ears. It's not, it just, it's just so annoying. 10 out of 10 people will notice if you have crappy audio. So invest in good audio. If you can't read that, can you read this? I don't know. Okay, if not, filters. It's my filter case. I have some other filters laying around. Filters, I love filters. How I recommend getting some Promis. The first one I would get is if it's an 82 or if you have a matte box and you get a slide in, whatever you know your situation is, I would get a 1 8 black Promis. Uh, now make sure you get a black Promis and not just a Promis. Those are two different filters and two different, uh, so the Promis brings down everything. The, the black Promis retains the blacks and so you're gonna have a different look. And the black Promis is used way more in 
cinema. So if you're gonna try to emulate that or if you wanna rent them out to a job, if you're doing renting, the black chromis is gonna be kind of like your go-to used on basically every shoot. The one eighth, if you can only choose one, I would recommend getting one eighth and one fourth down the line, but the one eighth is gonna be much more, you can kind of always have it on your camera and it'll just kind of cut a little of that digitalness off. But I would start with that and then build from there. From there, you know, if you wanna get some visual effects, there's a lot of cool visual lens uh, filters that you can get, you know, if you're doing music videos, it helps kind of keep your look a little fresh and new. Uh, variable NDs, obviously, let me take this out. I talked about it in the Komodo video. This is my variable ND one that is actually behind. Because so instead of putting filters in front of the matte box, I have it behind, but it's the same quality. Watch that video if you wanna learn a little more about this. I'm also gonna make a separate video about the Keper tie mount, because I think it's like a super necessity if you have a Komodo. I feel like that's one of the most important accessories to have. So stay tuned for that. But you can get the variable NDs on the front. Yeah, so that's filters. Get some filters, invest in filters. It'll make your films look so much better. A top handle. This is the wooden camera top handle. Super nice, got some wood up here. Got a lot of mounting points. If I wanted to run some kind of arm situation, I could put it here and then have the monitor out here. Run the monitor without this little front part, just slide down here or have like a mic here if I had the monitor out here. Has a lot of mounting points. You can also switch it. Allows you to spin it. So if you want to do back carriage, my wire's a little tight right now, but you know, you get that understand. And then you can hold it forward. I cannot stress enough how important a top handle is. Because if you don't have a top handle, you're going to get shakier images. Holding the camera up here. Now this is a pretty heavy, uh, excuse my bib. I have a rocking in overalls today. Hey, okay. So I'm gonna, <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. Having a top handle allows you to get one, under shot, under slingshots, way more steady, way more stability, as well as you can hold it up here. It just gives you a better mounting point versus just kind of holding the camera. You'll get some micro jitters. Now this is a pretty heavy rig. I don't know exactly how much it is, but you know, it's more than probably five, it's more than five pounds with the cinema lens on there as well. So I don't really have those micro jitters, but having a top handle will just help have smoother shots. You can really easily get handheld shots. It looks clean. Get yourself a good top handle. This wooden camera one is great. I like the wood accent. You know, talking about style. I like the mounting points. It does what it does. It is a little expensive, but you know what they say in cinema. You can throw cinema on it. You have a 50 to $100 additional payment on it. But I will also say you do get what you pay for. I'm not throwing any shade at, you know, any of the, oh shit. I'm not trying to throw any shade at any companies, but you do get what you pay for. Anything from wooden camera, I know it's gonna be solid. I know I'm not gonna have any issues. I know they have good customer service, and I know that they're putting a lot of time and effort into it, and it's made with quality ingredients. Versus, you know, I'm not gonna throw any shade at small rig. I use small rig stuff, but I've had issues with, you know, perfect example, my previous handle I had for small rig. It was a top handle, super nice. I still use it for my, uh, R5, but the tie down is a little sketch. It's a little clinky because they just have tiny little springs in there and it can get stuck. And just over the wear and tear, I know that a wooden camera item is gonna last longer or a condor blue or a bright tangerine or even a shape, you know? So I would recommend just in general, talking about accessories, if you can, or maybe save up for another two months get the better quality thing. It will last longer and, you know, a lot of times if you cheap out, you'll still wanna get that thing and you may buy it down the line when you have more money. So instead, why don't you save up and get the thing that you need. That, you know, that's just my little two cents on there. But also, let me bring this back up, a monitor. So important. This is a seven inch monitor. If you have the money, I get, I recommend getting a seven inch. You just feel like you're in the action way more. You can see the stuff, you can zoom in. A seven inch is essential. I also have a five inch monitor. That's my original monitor. It's the Shinobi five. But like, there's no reason not to get a monitor. There's a lot of, you know, free feel world or free world or whatever that one brand is. They seem to make pretty good monitors for, you know, the money. Uh, Small HD just came out with that five inch basic monitor. That's like $320. Super nice. The Shinobi, this is what I have, um, the original five inch Shinobi. I think that's, you could probably find that on eBay for like $200 now. Get yourself a monitor. Don't rely, if you're using a DSLR, don't uh, uh, rely on the monitor on the back of the camera. The color is off, it's small. 
you can't do anything on a three inch monitor. Even a five inch monitor can sometimes struggle, but it's those two extra inches make a big difference. But if you have the money, get yourself a seven inch monitor. This is the 702 Touch. I really enjoyed the touch feature. Some people don't like it, some people like the buttons. So there's the 703 Bright, I think, that has the actual manual button. Sometimes I wish I had a button, I won't lie, but the touch is also nice. So you, you know, it's kind of a throw up. If you like touching and like the haptic feedback of the sliding, or if you like the button, it's really up to you. But a top handle and a monitor, before anything else, those are essential accessories. Just having a top handle will make your shots look so much more cinematic and having a monitor will make sure your stuff is in focus and framed properly. And those two things combined will make your film 10 times better, which is how it is. A good follow focus system. Now I'm not using this every time, but if I'm not having a first AC pulling my focus and I'm not just kind of running, gunning and doing it myself, I have a follow focus system. And having a good one will make a difference. There's a lot of cheap alternatives over there out there. This one's expensive. I wouldn't say this is the first follow focus that you should get unless you have money to burn. It's like $500 or $400. Uh, this is the wooden camera, Zip Pro. Comes with this, a little marking disc that you can put a mark on. The things fell off, but they have like little things on there so you can kind of put your ins and outs. But in general, having a follow focus system that catches, pulls properly, pulls smoothly, and you don't have to worry about just having kind of issues is in, it's, in, it's imperative to have a really good focus pulling system. Uh, one that I used for a while was, uh, it's like fo Focha, Focha or something. It's like F-O-T-G-A or something. But things to kind of like look out for. Uh, small rig I think makes one, Tilta makes one, but they're really small, those nano ones. You want something that you have like a big grip on. The small ones, when you're kind of gripping small, you can't get the full twist of. You wanna have one that has a big throw on it. So you can get those far focuses if you need to. The small ones, they feel a little less sturdy and you don't have as much of a throw on them. But if you wanna have the ability to have wireless focus, maybe the Nucleus Nano would be the move from Tilta because you can mount it onto your camera so it feels like it's normal. But then also, if you need to do wireless, you can. So that is an also another alternative. This is my uh, first real film tripod. I have a Shetler, Shetler, Shetler. Satchler. <laughs> Satchler, I have a Satchler tripod. And that's like my main go-to and this is my B camera uh, tripod. But this is my one, I was using it for like four years. Get yourself a good film fluid tripod. Fluid head, super important. If you don't know, on the back, different tensions for your resistance. Um, so depending on how heavy your camera is and where it's balanced, you, you do that, you dial it in and then you have this untied so it's all loose. And then the idea is if you balance it correctly, no matter what position you leave your camera in, it will stay in that position. Having a fluid head will instantly change your filming. So many old movies, you know, people get caught up in the gear, like having a, a, a gimbal or steady cam. So many old great films were made just handheld or with a tripod. Getting familiar with a tripod, your oldest best friend, your oldest tool in the book. If you've never shot with a fluid head, and you shoot on a fluid head, you'll know the difference instantly. The drag, the pull, you can, it feels like you're, the only way I can describe it if you've never messed with it is it feels like you are pushing your hand through molasses or honey, right? But doing that gives you the ability to get silky smooth shots, pans and tilts. And if you're just using an old boring tripod, it's not gonna get the job done. Get yourself a good tripod. This, I think when I bought it was like $800 or 600 and something dollars. Usually a 75 or 100 millimeter bowl. And that's this bottom part. So I feel like I'm kind of violating this tripod right now, but this area, that's the bowl. And that's just for mounting points. If you put it on like a Dana Dolly or any kind of other mounting, get yourself a good fluid head and some good legs. These are carbon fiber, makes it easier to walk with them because 
you don't want to carry around really heavy sticks. And that's kind of it. So uh, those are the necessity, the necessity, the bare necessities. <laughs> For the longest time, I always thought the bare necessities, like the, it's a play on words, because he's a bear, but it's like the most important things you need, the bare necessities. What's his name, Jimbo? Bel Jimbo Belushi, <laughs> whatever that bear's name is, he, he had it figured out. These are the bare necessities of what I think you need as a filmmaker. Audio, top handle, monitor, tripod, battery solution, filters. You have those items, your filmmaking will improve. Even if you don't physically improve, the look will improve. The sound will improve. The shots will improve and your life will improve. Oh, also the multi-tool, wherever that is. It will improve. So those are the necessities. Um, I might do another list down the line of like little kind of little things like, you know, power solution for your monitor or, you know, necessity gear I think you should buy. Like, I think everyone should have a hazer in their kit. I think a hazer or a phaser is a super important item to, you know, add some atmosphere to your shot and they're pretty cheap because they're made for like DJs and stuff like that. And you can get a really cheap one off Amazon or like even the ones in the spray. So I'll probably do another video talking about stuff like that. But this is camera necessity, camera accessories. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Consider subscribing, consider liking, consider sharing. Let me know if there's some information that you want to know in the comments below. Here's a little fun extra. Uh, a really good nano arm, NATO arm, eye footage and actually really like it. I'll do a little video talking about it in the accessory one, but locks down like a champ. No, nah, that's not going anywhere. That's really annoying when things kind of like slide around. So because it has the locking up here and these teeth are massive, doesn't slide. Highly recommend having a good arm for when you need it. So that's a little bonus feature for you. See you guys in the next video. Adios.